Hey guys, so now that we covered grammar, the next thing we want to talk about is content. So content is very important. You can have a flawless paper and that will get you to a certain point, but if you don't have the content and you're not addressing the topic properly, that's going to draw you back. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was editing symbols. And I have a page and it looks like this, and it has just basic editing symbols on it. Like if it, they write frag, that's a fragment. If it's a WC, that's word choice. If it's a punctuation error, they'll usually be a little P to wherever you did it at. Um, and then they have like colon error. They have wrong word, SP, that's spelling error, stuff like that. That's important to have because you want to understand exactly what the comments are. Um, instead of writing everything out, it's just easier to edit through a paper and to use these editing symbols. So this is a good thing to have. I'm going to link it um, so you guys can access this as well. So the next thing I have for you guys is on quotes. And this one introduces quotes, using quotes, formatting longer quotes, referring to authors and, and titles, referring to characters and events, referring to parts of works. So the reason why this is important, I have it in purple, is because you want to make sure that once you reach a certain point, essays are not just going to be what you think. Essays are going to have to include quotes so that you can um, so that you can prove your point, so that you can express um, that you understand what that piece of literature meant, and you need proof, kind of, and that's where your quotes are going to come in. So also, with quotations, it's very important because you don't want to take an idea from another author because that's plagiarizing, and plagiarizing is a huge no-no. You can get, you can fill that paper, you can fill that class, you can get expelled. Plagiarism, plagiarism is very important that you don't do it. So quotes and quoting things properly is a way to avoid that. So the next thing I have for you guys is a strategy for proofreading your paper. And mine is in blue. And here it goes to um, go away from your paper after you've finished writing it and then come back later with a fresh mind, which is always good to do. If you're stuck, just walk away, take a breather, um, you know, mull it over in your head, think about it, then come back. Then it says read each sentence out loud and that way you'll avoid, um, sometimes it makes sense in your head, but you'll drop words as you're typing, which happens to me often. Um, you can have someone else read your paper out loud to you. Um, you can start proofreading from the last sentence up and set from the top down. Um, cover the paper with a piece of paper slowly and move down um, each line. Uh, focus on commonly made serious errors like run-ons, fragments, ver verb form errors, and verb agreement errors. Um, learn the types of errors you tend to make and focus on those. And try to distinguish between sentences you know are correctly written and sentences you think are correctly written and sentences you're completely sh unsure about. So in that aspect, what comes in is to save your work. I know that I have a ton of essays saved up um, that are in my flash drive. And I go back and once I get the paper back from the teacher, if there's any marks on them, I go back and re-edit that on my computer, and then I save it. And the reason for that is because typically you'll make the same errors over and over again. If you're too wordy, you will always be too wordy. If you're committing run-ons or sentence slices or you have trouble with commas, you're typically going to always have trouble with commas unless you address that. So it's not just about learning it on a reference book, it's about applying it to your own writing, which is different. Um, I know that they focus on different parts of your brain, so in order to get the information from one side to another can be a bit confusing. So you want to make sure that you understand that in your own writing. So save your papers, look at them. Do you always have a WC? Do you always have a P? Do you always have verb tense agreement issues? And if you do, then um, hit the research, hit the um, grammar books on that, and then try to apply it slowly. So the other thing that I have which is a really great thing to have, is a scoring guide. So this is an essay scoring guide for English, and this one's the numerical one through six. So there's different ways to grade a paper. Um, there's a one through six, and then there's a one through 12, and then letter grade. So I have both of them. I have the one through six, and where four is a passing paper. Um, four is average, basically you're addressing the topic that you need to be addressing, but there's nothing really special, and there might be a few grammatical errors. And then I have the, for research paper, I have 
the grading score for that as well. So you'd be surprised that from one paper to another, there's a huge difference. Like from a B essay paper to an A essay paper, an A essay paper not only shows variety of sentence length and sentence openers, displays accurate interest and word choice, uses a variety of sentence pattern as listed in the A paper, but perhaps not as frequently. So it has all of that, and it also uses parallel structures, compound sentences using semicolons, conjunctions with controlled rhythm, pace, and emphasis. So from a B paper to an A paper, you need that extra piece. Um, and then also in mechanics, in organization, and in content, it's going to require different things. So you may think that from a B to an A paper, it's not that much of a difference. It's just like a flip of a coin, and it's really not. They really have different expectations and different criteria that meets an A paper versus a B paper. So it's always good to know. Sometimes you write your paper out not really understanding how you're going to be graded on it. You assume that grammar is going to be a big thing or just having the proper content. But if you don't have rhythm, you don't have figurative language, you don't have parallelism, you're not including things like that, you're not really taking your writing to that next level where it really has to be. So I'm going to put this up so you guys can take a look at these. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about content, I know it seems like a lot, I'm really sorry, is essay style. So everybody has their own writing style. And in academic papers, although they have to be formal, it still really expresses your style as a writer. So there's different types of essays. There's a compare and contrast essay. There's a profile essay. There's a story essay. There's different kinds of essays. And different kinds of essays will be organized in different ways. So what I have here is the St. Martin's Guide to Writing. It's an eighth edition. This is a textbook I got for an English class, and I kept it because I just loved it so much. So this one's an essay. And this one is a, let me check. This one is a compare and contrast essay. So as you guys can see, there's different coloration marks for everything. And it comes with an explanation on the sidebar. So this book is critical of all of the writing. So it shows you where that thesis is, where the topic sentences are, um, where it's a little vague, where it illustrates certain things, where he, this author used, of this essay used things in a, neg in a positive way and they were successful, and where they're a little vague and he could have cleared them up for it. So this introduces every single type of essay, goes through them, and then gives you an example of what it's supposed to look like. And I think that's really important because you've probably done a profile essay before, but you've never realized it. So it's good to know because you're going to reach a certain point in your career that you're going to receive a topic and you need to know which type of essay is going to address that properly in the right way. So that's important to be acquainted with. So I'll try to give you guys kind of like a short overview of what different essay includes and what different essay what different essay style attacks what. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is that if you're going to, if you're struggling with content, um, the important thing about content is to not go for the obvious example, to not go for the obvious illustration. They want you to think outside the box, and not just outside the box, but to address that as to kind of humankind and life as it is. Um, there's a reason why these works of um, literature have lasted for so long because they address some, some sort of human aspect. And I feel like, I know it sounds really weird, but if you try to think of it in that way, like not just as a story, but how does it apply to life in general, that's how you'll come up with those ideas that are out of the box. So um, that's all about content. And I also wanted to just reiterate how English, you kind of just have to write. There's no foolproof way of how you're going to get better. You just kind of have to write and write and write and write. And once you've written enough, then you start to get better. If you don't read and you don't write, of course, you're not going to be as great at it. But um, writing this is really going to improve your writing. So um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.